Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Infinite Pass Log. As always, it's me, Ricardo. I'm me, Todd. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about 007 Goldeneye. Ugh. <laughs> Shivers down my spine. Oh, come on. Now, when was Goldeneye released? I remember it was released way after the movie came out. So, um... I, 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 basically, this is how I'm fucking prepared we are, right? <laughs> I think it was 97, um, personally, or around there. Like, that, that seems to me the time, but obviously, you know. You got it right on the nose. 97. Boom! <laughs> Hell yeah. How, so, how did I even know that? <laughs> apparently, you really like the game, right? <laughs> well, I think that was 97. I think Ocarina of Time was 98. Oh, so okay. that's how I remember, because I remember when my brother bought the N64, he got it with Goldeneye. Oh, he did? Um, so that's how I, I, it just kind of stuck in my head, because I was, what, I was, I wasn't even six at the time that came out. It was about a month, uh, about two, or, no, a month and a half before my birthday. Um, and I think he got it around my birthday sort of time, so yeah, like... I remember that from a very young age, I was about six when I first saw and played Goldeneye. I think, now, I think this is a statement. This is true. If you owned an N64 back in the day, you owned Goldeneye. I went to so many friends' houses and always saw that game in their collection. Oh, yeah, if you didn't own Goldeneye, you, you didn't have an N64. It exactly. wasn't even worth owning an N64 without Goldeneye at that time. It was the multiplayer game on console. It was like the Quake of console. <laughs> Pretty much, except I never actually played it for the multiplayer. Um, I always watched my dad uh, play the single player, and I played it a little bit as well. But uh, on to our points that we r wrote up right before we started recording. Yeah, actually, to the points of our preparation, you know, unlike dates. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a game developed by uh, Rareware. Uh, that team went on to make Perfect Dark, and then went on to be s not Sledgehammer games, but they made uh, Time Splitters. So, play any of those games. They do get better. They do get better. But, um, Goldeneye. And then worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in all that, Goldeneye. Goldeneye's where we are. Yeah. <laughs> Believe uh, it or not, Goldeneye's made by the same guys who made Banjo Zooey, which was our first podcast. Yeah. Great. Just great. I don't know. Circle? I'm not it's sure just, if it really is a circle. It's, it's just two opposite ends of the same spectrum, isn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> So, we both played this as children, grew up with it. Um, at the time, well, I still do. I still love James Bond as a franchise, and this was, like, my perfect game as a kid. Like, I constantly played this all the time. I, I thought it was, like, the perfect movie adaptation. And in some ways, it kind of is. Ba like, looking back on it, but <laughs> replaying it. Eh. See, I never actually saw it as that. Like, I just enjoyed the game. Like at the time, the atmosphere was quite like for the, for its time, it was realistic. There wasn't really many games that were meant to be like that. Like mm -hmm. obviously, a lot of the games, especially on Nintendo, it was obviously like your Mario, Zelda, like you know, and then like like Banjo Kazooie and all this stuff. It was all like cartoony stuff, you know, and like Pokemon, heavy. Donkey Kong, and you know, it was all like what's that cartoon heavy was it? Cartoon heavy and platform heavy, like yeah, it's just exactly. Constant with platforms. Uh, um, platforms. so it for, for for its time there wasn't actually a lot else around like it, especially on like the consoles, you know, at that time. Um, so yeah, like it was for me at that age, especially obviously I was saying just discovering that kind of game. Yeah. It was just it was different. It was interesting. It was fun. Plus you got to shoot things. You know, yeah. things went boom and exploded, and chairs exploded, wooden crates exploded, you know, like, posters on the fucking wall exploded, lockers exploded, yeah. everything exploded. <laughs> Actually, interesting, I, I just remembered, um, I think Goldeneye was one of the first console games to have um, area of effect. I'm not sure if I'm using that right, but, like, where you would shoot a person, they would react different. I don't oh, remember Oh, you mean, like, actual uh, bodily reactions, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, not area of effect, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like you shoot them in the arm, they would, they would uh, go, they would, their hand would go to their, their arm because it was hurt there, and it was it, that was kind of cool. 
best ones when you shot them in the dick because they actually put both <laughs> hands over their crotch and fall to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. It's so good. It's good to this day. Yeah, it is. Um, what else? Uh, like I said before, it was a great adaptation to, or I feel it was a great adaptation to the movie. And it was just, it was really fun to play through and replay through because with each added difficulty, it added more objectives, which you didn't see too much of in the, back in the day. And still to this day, I don't see that a lot. A game usually, yeah. it goes up in difficulty, it's just the AI gets stronger and smarter uh, to how the player uh, plays the game. GoldenEye was different, it added more objectives, like you had to hack a computer that you didn't have to hack before. Or you had to or, disable yeah. all the alarms. Um, or in some objectives, uh, some missions, I think it was the boat mission. Which actually wasn't in the movie, that was an added mission uh, to oh, the game. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. That one's a hard one, dude. Um, oh, I know, and also the worst thing as well is that they um, timed missions, the timer is less as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, which I don't remember seeing that, like, changing on difficulty until, like, Call of Duty 4. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's... Yeah, because, like, on Call of Duty like, the time was less, like, when you're running to defuse the rocket, like, the missiles or something, near the end of Call of Duty 4, or was it Modern Warfare 2? I can't remember, it was one of them. Um, like, that's timed, and, yeah, that's that's shorter with, uh, with difficulty as well. Yeah. I mean, well, it's something that you don't see for a long time. Yeah, and that's... That's what, it, like, looking back on GoldenEye, that's really cool. Um... I know, like, for that boat mission, you, like, for the lower difficulties, you just had to save, like, one, a hostage. And then on, like, the double O one, you have to save all hostages and do, like, yeah. a whole bunch of other objectives yeah. on top you've of that. You've got to save hostages, you've insane. got to plant the bomb on the helicopter, um, you've got to disable, like, the computers or something. Yeah. You've got, like, it's crazy. It was crazy. Like, GoldenEye, um, the N64 one had great or not great but interesting environments to play through because you're on a you're you're in the so, you're in a soviet uh base dam like thing you're you're out in the snowy wasteland you're in a uh, missile silo um some some of the later missions the missions that you unlock through playing on double o uh level you get to play old james bond uh movies i know moonraker is one of them i don't and remember the other one aztec with aztec. zulu was it baron samadhi that's it. I'm just, I'm just such a big James Bond nerd. <laughs> but yeah, like that was cool. Like, like you didn't have that in many games at the time, especially movie licensed games. Like that's, it kind of blew my mind going back to it to think like, wow, they had these characters and these missions just because developers had, you just wanted to do it. It's yeah, crazy. And the fact that it's a movie license game and it's got other movie stuff in it, like yeah. as extras, you don't see that most most uh, movie based games. It's just that it's the movie. We're gonna take some scenes, um, sometimes lift directly lift them, and yeah. here you go. It's out the door. You know, it, it's it's badly produced, but Goldeneye I mean, was something different. Until the Lego Movie games, yeah, like every movie tie-in yeah. game was shocking. Yeah, it was and just it, it was usually sent out the door, uh, developed by. Uh, a mess of, of developers usually that just work their hardest to make a game and just sent out but GoldenEye was very very different um, for the time it, it was also a weird and interesting way of doing stealth um, weapons were silent in GoldenEye like if it had a suppressor it was a silent weapon and enemies did not realize that you were there or that they got shot yeah, that is a good point, actually. I mean, there's certain things about Golden that stand out, like, even now. I mean, you mentioned about the environments varying. Obviously, most of that's down to the movie. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the way they did it and the way they brought it across, I think they did really well. I thought it was um, also really... Wait. I thought it was also really cool how the camera always panned at Bond, went around in the 360, and then you went into his head to, like, see what he's seeing. Always yeah. thought that was awesome. <laughs> and I still do. Uh, and the music's playing, like... Oh yeah, and the music that music was so <laughs> pumping. Like I don't th like when you listen to it, you can't be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, that sounds like a Bond tune." You won't really catch it. But if you know the game, you're like, "Oh yeah." Um like oh, that my, cradle I've got, theme. 
I've literally, I've got the music stuck in my head right now, <laughs> and the alarm sound, because the amount of times <laughs> I heard that alarm when I played Double O Agent like last year or the year before, I, it's just stuck in my head, that alarm noise, it's stirring my head in already. <laughs> like, like that cradle theme, it's one of the last missions that you play from the GoldenEye movie. That theme, listen to it, Paul, I'm, I'm gonna link it in the video, listen to that theme, that the way it starts up, da 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 da. It's just like, oh man, I'm gonna get shot up. I'm gonna shoot a lot of people. It's such a great theme. I love it. See, I just remember the crate. Like, there's so many things coming back to me now as we're talking about this. Like, it's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Um, I mean, the main thing, like, obviously, I was saying about like timers being less for uh, certain missions. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the mission? I can't remember if, how far before crate was. I don't think it was that far. Where you actually need to run through the silos for the rockets, the missiles. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, shut yeah, yeah. Off I remember that one. When you're chasing 006. That timer is so quick when you're playing on Double O Agent, and you've got to get all the key cards and everything. Because, and I think you also have to level. blow up a couple things as you're running. Yeah, you've got to place. blow up certain um, areas, and then you've also got to um, disable certain computers and stuff as well. Yeah. It's but it, the t oh, just the t oh, it's just all coming back to me, and I'm kind of having a little nightmare right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Because sadly, we have to talk about the bad of Goldeneye. There is a lot of bad. <laughs> a lot of bad. Um, for one, the game doesn't look that good anymore. No, no, no. It's it's very ugly, like very ugly, in terms of, well, everything. I mean, the textures are bad. The faces are just horrific. Yeah. Um, like you said, they basically did a facial scan and stuck it onto the, the, like, the character, and it just looks horrendous. Now... Game development still does that today. Uh, later Bond movie g licensed games use the actors and like 3D, uh, 3D taking them and model, you know, put their face on the characters. But those were modeled. These are box heads with faces of people. Like without those faces, you could not tell anybody apart. No, like, it's just, it's horrendous. I mean, the worst thing for me about GoldenEye, I mean, the thing that makes it age worse than anything is the controls like that is the thing that ruins gold life for me now like i mean if it had two thumbsticks then it would play perfectly fine despite how it looks and it would take so much of the stress away yeah i i uh i felt that i felt that uh very hard because i'm, I'm too used to newer games but back in the day it was actually probably the best control scheme because the only thing that could compare to that was like Turok or something right yeah which was used the same kind of control scheme no I thought it used the C the uh, C buttons to like control like it, it was a dual like stick set up the best that they could do at the time um well I've never played Turok Goldeneye's got Goldeneye just has this weird auto rail thing where the guy where the gun is always pointed at the center of the enemy there was a button to like do precision controls, but that's shit. And I know I it's shit that's personally. How Turok was as well. No, I think Turok, you use the C stick. So you use the Z, Z trigger to shoot, but you use the C stick, uh, C buttons, not the C stick. That's the GameCube. You use the C buttons to like look left, right, up, and down. No, I thought you used it to strafe. Or strafe. No, I'm no, not no. Sure. No, it, you're right. But either way, we're not talking about Turok. But yeah, yeah, like it was so much better in Goldeneye. It just felt it felt good because like you could use the A and B buttons for context sensitive things, opening up doors, shutting off alarms, uh, reloading. It, it, it just felt good. Yeah, I mean like the whole aim At thing did help, but you didn't really need to use the accurate aim because most of the time auto aim would do the job for you. Oh yeah, but you'd waste a lot um, more bullets. Not, not necessarily. I mean, at the start of Cradle, I remember like this is the good thing about the game. I remember at the start of Cradle. You could literally, when you're running across that fir the very first bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you aimed right, you could just shoot. You wouldn't even see them, and they'd be dead. And you could just kill like the first three enemies like that without mm -hmm. even having to look. With the perfect theme running in the background. Mm. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that reminds me. One of the biggest cons of Goldeneye as well, right? And mm. you probably haven't even thought of this: the draw distance. Ooh. Now. In levels like the snow, uh, the snow wasteland, it actually works in its favor because oh yeah, it's it's snowing. Like you can use the it's snowing excuse. 
yeah, that you like can't you can see very far. The whole thing of it's, it, you know, it's difficult to see. You know, like that's fine. Yeah. Um, but then when you're on like the biggest level that it annoys me on is the train level. The train level? Um, I was gonna say the jungle. Ah, uh, the jungle is 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 a nightmare. Like, I I completely agree with that. But you can usually spot enemies. I like if you know what you're doing, the way you're going, like you can spot them quite easily. Mm. I mean, the reason I point out the train level specifically is because it is just a straight train. Sometimes you'll have someone shooting you from a distance that you can't even see, and the bullets are coming from nowhere, but they're just stood behind something you can't even see. Yeah. Whereas in jungle, they're normally just stood in trees, and you can shoot, and you can still hit them. I think you can strafe mostly for the jungle level. Exactly. So you, you, because there's more room, you can avoid. Whereas you don't have that option in the train level. Hmm. You can only sort of duck in and out. Do you see what I mean? I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. I don't remember um, the that's... train level too much. I remember playing the jungle level so much as a kid. Now, granted, I never beat, I never got to jungle level myself. I played my dad's file a lot. It was not that good. Not very good at video games as a kid. <laughs> I mean, I never played on Double O Agent as a kid, so you know, I only played on I think it was Agent. Yeah, it was only Agent that I played on. I was a bit of a pansy when I was younger. Yeah. But to be fair, I was like six or seven. Like, I think that is allowed. Yeah. You know, most of the time I spent was on the multiplayer with my brother, and we did play an awful lot of that. Well, I like I said, I never really played multiplayer. Um, it was whenever me and my brother played the game, we were like, let's just play the, the single player because it's really cool. But you want to go watch the movie, and we go watch the movie anyways. <laughs> Probably shut it off and go watch the movie. It was a, uh. I, I, I've seen that movie at least like four or five times, and I still can't. Like, I, I remember liking it, but I don't remember it, you know? It's weird. I've seen it way more than that, and I, <laughs> I, I remember the game better than the film. Yeah! Like, I remember <laughs> seeing the, the game. I've more seen like, more than the times I've played the game. Yeah. Now, uh, talking about GoldenEye, I, I think we've, we've said all the points we could, right? Yeah, it's been kind of jumbled, but it's, it's, it's one of those games that actually just, is just so messed up, it has to be jumbled. Yeah, I... We like certain aspects of it, but gameplay-wise, it's not a very good game. Just I mean, yeah, on, on today's level of what we're used to, obviously, it's one of those things, it's nostalgia. Like, you love it because of, of, like, it reminds you of so many things, and it, it was fun when you were younger. But now, like, in terms of relevance on how much certain things have advanced these days, it's the controls that let it down more than anything. The yeah. graphics are doable, but the controls aren't. I mean, the draw distance is kind of harsh, but it's one of those things. Yeah, I, I urge anybody to listen to this. Play the game, and if you agree, just tell us, like, like we were right, or if, you, if you're if you not and you're crazy, then uh, I guess message us again and say that you're not. But Yeah, just call us dicks with, and say we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, but saying saying how we're so used to modern controls uh i forget now damn later on there was a re-release on the wii uh then on the xbox 360 and playstation 3 called goldeneye on the wii and then goldeneye reloaded now this was developed i think by activision it was developed by activision okay developed, i thought it was, it was published by games. activision obviously it's developed by one their groups yeah which is, it was made on the same engine as Call of Duty 4 was ported over to the Wii on, which is why it plays like Call of Duty, and it feels like Call of Duty. Yes, it does. Yes, yes. it does. It feels like Call of Duty 4 with the golden eye skin. Now, Call of Duty 4 is really good, but the Wii version was shite. I don't know. <laughs> See, that's and not only was the Wii version shite, golden eye was too! <laughs> See, that's where I have vision. I this is where we we stand on different uh, different things here. Cause like, I like it because it's more modern controls. Aim down the sights, whether you like them or hate them, it really does help. Uh, it just it feels a lot better because it's modern controls. But at the same time, it's like oh, there's nothing really separating it except it being called Golden Eye. Yeah. Now, with this Golden Eye, uh, just if anybody doesn't know. The 007 GoldenEye N64 game was based off a movie of the same title that starred Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. Um, the best. 
bond. Oh. <coughs> debatable. Very debatable. <laughs> Roger Moore is a fantastic bond. Is super unappreciated. But, <laughs> continuing. <laughs> uh, the remake, GoldenEye Re uh, Reloaded. I'll just call it GoldenEye Reloaded so everybody understands. GoldenEye Reloaded had Daniel Craig as that game's bond. Now, that's a plus and a con for me, personally. More of a con for Todd, but he's dumb. But... No, but you can't make a game off a license without using the licensed character. Like, Brosnan is what made Goldeneye Goldeneye. I agree. I completely agree. But I and love Daniel Craig. I mean, He's a great fan. I mean, it's very obvious, like, why. Like, one of the main reasons that I can tell why they would have gone with Craig, obviously, minus licensing and all that kind of shit, is that the direction of the new Goldeneye is much more action-focused. Like... In the first level alone, there's just so much more explosions than the original Goldeneye, like, just unnecessarily. And not only that, it's like, boxes don't explode, and yet there's still more explosions. How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Crates do not explode, and there's still more explosions in the new one. Like, tell me how that works. Everything explodes in the original one, and yet this explodes more. It's like Michael Bay made Goldeneye. This it's is true. It's just stupid. So, it's more action-oriented. Stuff, which makes sense why they'd want Craig, as Craig is just the hard faced I'm gonna kick ass kind of uh, bond, but, not the slick, smooth kind of bond. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna park my walk the P9. Keep, but keep here's doing. the weird thing <laughs> up until uh, Skyfall, which this was not released, uh, this was released before that, uh, the Craig movies did not have that many explosions. Granted, no. in, in Quantum, it had that one big explosion because they just wanted to blow up a hotel. Just for yeah, the hell of it. This was based. Um, this was set made after the first film we did. Um, yeah. Casino Royale. But Casino Royale was still a more gritty. I'm gonna punch. It was gritty. In Bond. I, it I will. I will say uh, it was gritty. It wasn't. Un oh, I'm gonna seduce the ladies, Bond. And no. he just looks like a hard-faced piece of shit. <laughs> so, like I said, it's a plus and a negative because, negative. like you said, <laughs> like you said, it is a. It's more gritty. Um. Goldeneye and Pierce Brosnan is a more campy kind of bond, you know, bunch of gadgets, more of like a smooth talker, and you don't have any of any of that in Goldeneye Reloaded. Um, yeah. But with that, with the new direction in like this more uh, Craig Bond setting, they did do like different uh, changing the scenes around that made it more realistic, and I felt that was kind of cool. Because, again, I really do like Craig Bond, and it was interesting to see that. But I much prefer the campy Bond compared to the Craig Bond when we're talking about Goldeneye. Yeah, I mean, that's how it's meant to be. You know? that's how you, I, I think it's more to do with that's how you know it. I mean, yeah. quite a lot of people did say that like, I didn't play too much of the Wii one. I'm not going to lie. I'm here criticizing it, but it put me off quite quickly. But that's more because I know and love the original. That's just nostalgia. I mean, if you yeah. don't know the original GoldenEye game and you watch the film and then play like the new adaptation of the game, like you're gonna notice two different things. Yeah, you're gonna notice so different. no Pierce Brosnan, no Boris. Yeah. And then that's but, it. Like Boris. Yeah, but that, mean. you're not gonna know the difference between the two games, so you, you're just gonna be like, oh, this is it. You'll probably enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Like people really like the online on it as well. Yeah, I guess. Um, I never really touched it. I never touched any it, multiplayer. I only played these Bond games for the straight single player. It's very weird. But you need to be able to run around as odd job. Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the fun of playing online on a bond game. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to mention with the GoldenEye game. I'm a huge, huge player of stealth games. I love them. I love Metal Gear. Yeah, and I love Metal Gear. <laughs> I played a bit of Siphon Filter <laughs> I love as a stealth kid. games. I love Metal Gear, and uh, I love Metal Gear. <laughs> no, no, I played Siphon Filter as a kid. I remember playing that uh, very okay. fondly. But uh, with this game, they added stealth. More stealth than the old game in the N64 is very limited. I can understand why they couldn't do it. This is a game made in 2010. Um, hundreds of stealth games were made before it. And I think in some of the Call of Duty games, there was a good amount of stealth. Um, this game sucks with stealth. You, the one thing you have to do is crouch and not get in, in any direct sight of any enemy there's no cone vision kind of deal as long as you as long as they don't see you directly in front of them they will never see you and as soon as you kill a guy 
they disappear. That threw me out of the game, like, almost instantly. Every time I had to stealth through something, which I tried my best to do almost every time, I would be, I would grunt. And be like, ah, I gotta do this. Every time. I like the escape from like prison it. mission, I'm assuming. Which one? The escape from prison one. I don't, they didn't have that in, in the reloaded one. Didn't they? No. Oh my god. Like, Which is weird, because, like, that was... A forced stealth, uh, forced stealth mission in the N64 Original. one, and in the yeah. remake they completely skipped that out. Oh. Man, God, thinking back Douchebags. On. Or maybe Wait, they I did, that. and I couldn't recognize it, because there were some scenes that you can't really recognize. Ah, uh, because he just went all shooty shooty, and it didn't matter. Pretty much, yeah. Like yeah. the uh, snow section, uh, the snow level. Like in the yeah. N64 one, it's just a barren wasteland. You don't really know where to go. And yeah. Enemies come out of the fog and shoot you, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. In the reloaded, it's very straightforward. You're always going straight. Like the game, right. just you know, you're just following one path. That's all you do. Oh, that's it's, it's very linear, and oh, it's yeah. weird because an older game on older hardware had more. Ex yeah, well, I use the word expansive loosely, but it had a more expansive level than. A game made in 2010. It which felt more expansive. It felt more expansive. It was yes. probably the same size, just it was wound up instead of just laid out straight. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe a little bit bigger, given more hardware and everything, environments yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. I digress again. Yeah, I mean, like talking off the stealth, especially the original one, like just it cracks me up. Just the, the karate chopping. The karate <laughs> chopping is just amazing. Oh yeah, that's just also run around missed. just like. <laughs> Just go have you tried just going through a level just trying that? Oh, uh, it doesn't very work fun. if you do it from the front. If you do it from the back, it does. If you do it from the front, they literally just go, ooh, 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 ooh. Actually, funny enough, there's a weird glitch in GoldenEye. Um, if you run up on dudes, your character model clips through their gun. So if they're shooting at you, whether they stand up or yeah. like crouch, they cannot shoot you. You cannot get hurt. It, unless they got like a handgun, isn't it? Like, the big guns can't shoot you, but I think handguns might be able to. Maybe the handguns? I'm not 100%, but as long as you can't, like, if your body is in yeah. relative distance, like, past their gun, they won't be able to shoot you, it just goes right past you. It's very interesting. <laughs> I think it's a speedrunning tactic, but don't quote me on it. No. Oh. And, like, the throwing knives. Oh, the throwing knives. They're so frustrating, yet you can pick them up. Like, it's quite amazing that it, even in the time, like, you could pick up your own dropped weapons. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was a weapon you used that wasn't, like, ammo. You could throw all six, kni six knives and pick them back up. See, I don't remember that level too much because it was so boring to me as a kid that I just skipped it altogether. But I do remember, uh, like, the, whoosh, with the sound effect. I remember that sound effect. Yeah. It, it, was, it was really good. But I just, yeah, I don't know. Like, there's some things that, for the time, you have to look back and appreciate. But then you know that it's it's so bad, like just so bad. Like Gold Knight on N64 is one of those games that I would recommend, but I'd also recommend you avoid. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just in the middle here. We'll just end up right here in the middle. Yeah, but basically like, we're on the fence. On the fence. We're just right on that fence. You, you could play Gold Knight if you really want to, but we won't suggest it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I recommend playing it. But then, I don't know how far you'd get, especially on Double O Asian. You know, between and I mean on the, an actual console, not on an emulator. Yeah. Because you need the controller for the experience. Yeah, because playing on a like a modern Xbox or PlayStation controller, not slide. No. I'm telling you that from count. experience. <laughs> just I mean, it doesn't weird. count. You have to play it on N64. So I think that's all we have time for. Um, any other so that's, thoughts? That's all I got, unless I keep complaining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. We could both complain about the game for a little bit longer than an hour. But uh, oh, yeah. I would say we said everything that we need to, right? The most important things, I think, have been covered, considering we already moaned about it before we even started doing this. <laughs> Pretty much. So we're on the fence. Play it if you want. If you don't, still play it, because it's an interesting bit of video game history. It really is. Yes, massively. So, hope you guys enjoy or not enjoy the game. I know I sound like a dick. I'm sorry. I'll see you guys later. 
Yeah, basically, if you play it, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> play it at your own risk, losers. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's all done. Okay, all good. See you later. See ya.